It's Wednesday, July 31. Good afternoon. I'm Herman Green with your midday news. A special welcome if you're watching online at onespotmedia.com. A high-level investigation is underway into yesterday's seizure of 193 kilograms of cocaine valued at over $1.5 billion. The narcotics police made the seizure. It's reported that about 5.45 in the morning, the Jamaica Defense Force Coast Guard conducted an anti-narcotic operation southeast of Moran Point, St. Thomas, where they, where they removed 50 bales floating in the water. They were taken to the narcotics headquarters and, during processing, 998 parcels, each containing white substance resembling cocaine, were found. No arrest has been made in connection with the find. And four persons are in police custody in connection with the seizure of 1,300 pounds of compressed ganja in Westmoreland Tuesday evening. 170 parcels containing marijuana were reportedly found in a truck which crashed in the community of Waterwheel. The estimated value of the drug is not known at this time. We will provide further updates in, on this issue in subsequent new newscasts. A health crisis may be brewing in St. Catherine as several health breaches were recently identified by the health department at a number of food establishments in the parish. Chief Public Health Officer for the parish, Grayson Hutchinson, was speaking at the municipality's latest meeting where he highlighted some of the breaches which were found. Breaches of the public health food handling regulations were identified, including evidence of roach and infestation, presence of external openings, improper cleaning and sanitization equipment, tools, and the overall premises were inserted. The premises was there for Mr. Hutchinson also noted that at least one school's canteen was closed due to the presence of pests in the canteen and tuck shop areas. He, however, said that recent checks at the school showed improvements. That the deficiencies which were identified on the initial inspections have now been corrected. The school has seen outer openings which facilitated pest infestation screened our mesh doors to the preparation area and have installed a wash and sink in this area and have carried out other improvements. The Jamaica Co Chamber of Commerce is demanding that yesterday's crime summit must not be allowed to become another conversation which results in no real action. The summit, organized by the opposition People's National Party, involved a wide cross-section of stakeholders, including the government. President of the Jamaica Chamber of Commerce, Lloyd Distant, says part participants had a good discourse and there was clear consensus that it was a step in the right direction. However, he wants to see action. What we're looking for, as we compile the output, or as the outputs are compiled and shared, that we take it from being an initial discussion uh, to active movement on putting a plan in place, an overarching agreement in place on the way forward for tackling crime in Jamaica. Coming out of the crime summit, it was agreed that past reports on crime and violence would be re-examined and the recommendations implemented urgently. A statement from the People's National Party says the meeting expressed strong support for a national consensus around the agreed anti-crime measures presented by the private sector organization of Jamaica. The government is making preparation through the Housing Opportunity Production and Employment HOPE program to resolve the issue of squatting across the island. Prime Minister Andrew Holness made that revelation at the handing over of 37 new housing solutions to beneficiaries of the Spanish Ridge housing scheme in St. Catherine recently. We have the details in this report. The government is hoping that the Housing Opportunity Production and Employment HOPE program will put a dent in irregular settlements across Jamaica. Prime Minister Andrew Holness explains that the administration of a housing component of a program was recently completed. So now the government is ready to tackle squatting island-wide. Mr. Holness says the housing stock has been deteriorating, particularly in Kingston and St. Andrew, as the population grows. 
tenement yards and big yards are now a common feature of many communities. In my own constituency, uh, several years ago, I did an audit of households. And in one yard, we had over 100 people living in there. The housing component of the HOPE program will be geared at trying to target some of these housing conditions. It's not as simple as I'm making it out to be, many complexities, because people are living on land that they don't own, or they may own but can't show title. And so the whole program will have to work through all of those issues to provide the sustainable housing solutions in those circumstances. The government has already allocated one billion Jamaican dollars to the program, which will be distributed equally across all constituencies. Oshane Masters, TVJ News. And we now take a break here on the Midday News. But stay with us. More stories when we return. Welcome back. Continuing the news. Church leaders are responding to claims that they have not been vocal enough in speaking out against members of the clergy who have proven to be involved in sexual abuse. The Jamaica Council of Churches and the Jamaica Evangelical Alliance are asserting that the church has been vocal, but the public may not have been paying enough attention to their efforts. This discussion intensified this week following the entering of a guilty plea by Kenneth Blake, the pastor of the Harvest Temple Apostolic Church. Blake was charged in 2017 with rape, forcible abduction, grievous sexual assault, having sex with a person under 16 years old, and sexual touching. He initially denied the charges, but pleaded guilty to two counts of having sex with a person under 16 years old and one count of sexual touching. The case has again ignited the debate about whether the church adequately addresses the issue of members of its clergy being involved in these types of offenses, particularly in recent times when there have been more convictions reported. General Secretary of the Jamaica Council of Churches, Reverend Gary Harriot, accepts that the incidents of members of the clergy are uncomfortable. However, he asserts that the church has been doing different things to address the matter internally, internally and externally. I had some of that reality, but I think in more recent times, we're seeing more churches sensitizing their membership, their leaders, on how important the matter of your conduct is, especially the abuse of children. We're seeing a number of churches um, renewing their policies. Some had no policies. They have instituted policies. So I think there's greater awareness taking place and more education happening. Clearly, we need to be doing more. But I think that the, the status quo is not the same. And time now for a preview of what's coming up in this evening's health report. In the next edition of the health report, we look at dandruff. Yes, moisture plays a significant role because when the skin is very dry, you are at an increased risk of triggering off an eczema. Um, so you, you want to moisturize the skin. I know a lot of persons will say, oh, but my face is oily. I don't want to moisturize the face because the face is oily and then that's going to trigger it off even more. But the truth is, the skin has oil producing glands called sebaceous glands. And the dr more you dry your skin out, the more oil is going to be produced. That's the health report this evening in primetime news. And now for today's health living tip. To reduce your risk of dandruff, shampoo your hair at least once per week. Manage your stress or it can trigger dandruff or make it worse. And get sunlight as it may be good for dandruff. We go down to news in sports. The Jamaica Football Federation has sought to explain why at least one of the major clubs did not receive information about next month's start of the National Women's League. The matter came about after head coach of the Mandeville-based Los Perfectos, Dwayne James, revealed that his club had not been invited to a recent stakeholders meeting. We have more in this report from Karen Madden. The JFF Women's League is set to start on August 10 despite the absence of a title sponsor. But one of the more consistent clubs in the league, Los Perfectos, 
insisted it had not been invited to a meeting involving the clubs earlier this month. But speaking on Hits 92 FM's Girls Sports Club on Tuesday, JFF General Secretary Dalton Wint claimed that forms of interest were sent to all the parish associations. The instruction was for the parishes. That was so, in April, I said? Yeah. Mm -hmm. To get in touch with their um, clubs mm -hmm. and to have them fill out a form, a data entry form, and um, we did not receive any from Los Perfectos. We asked Wint if there was still room for Los Perfectos to play in the league this season. So but far. registration closes tomorrow. So if right. Los Perfectos send in their registration before tomorrow, them can still play the competition. Yes. I want to take it up on myself and say yes. Meanwhile, the JFF General Secretary bemoaned the inability of the Federation to attract a major sponsor, despite the historic debut of the reggae girls at the World Cup. The truth is that we have been trying. There is some interest out there, but that's to the point of us saying yes, and we have tied on that. A tied sponsor for this league. We have been struggling for the past couple of years to get this done. Wint also disclosed that the JFF needs $16 million to run the league. Each club will receive $100,000 for preparation money. Okay. And they receive another $10,000 for uniform. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, we can work through. The, the traveling will, will depend on, 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 on where they are coming from and how many away games and where they are going, you know. Okay. Depends on, 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 on their future. It's understood that eight clubs, including defending champions Waterhouse and first-timers Real Mona, attended the meeting and are expected to register ahead of Wednesday's deadline. Karen Madden, TVJ Sports. And JFF General Secretary Dalton Wint has responded with alarm at comments by National Under-23 coach Donovan Duque, who has blamed the local governing body for the underwhelming performances of the team at the recent Olympic qualifiers and the ongoing Panama Pan American Games in Lima, Peru. The Jamaicans conceded three goals in nine minutes against Honduras on Monday evening to eventually lose 3 1 after taking an early second half lead. It's the latest disappointment for the team, which got eliminated at the first stage of the Olympic qualifiers at home, and Duki leveled some of the blame at the feet of the JFF. For when I took the job, there were certain conditionality that was expected. The JFF to provide a physical trainer. For over eight months, a physical trainer has only come to our training session for three days. I can say this is the worst physically prepared team I've ever seen in my entire life. For over the 22 years that I've coached, this is the worst conditioned team I've ever seen. We cannot play competitively for more than, say, 60 minutes in any game. Hence, these are the results, and they are not desirable. Well, Wint, who spoke on the Girls Sports Club program on Hits 92 FM on Tuesday afternoon, expressed shock at Duke's outburst. The truth is that I, I can't believe that, and, and, and that is unbelievable. You can't believe what? If that was said. I know, and I'll ask the technical department to address it, because of the general executive by saying I'm um, biased towards um, protecting the JFS image, which I should. But the truth is that I know that a trainer was assigned to the program. And the initials, I don't know anything about a trainer not being there. Following Jamaica's exit from the Olympic qualifiers, JFF President Michael Ricketts told TVJ Sports that Duke's contract would be reviewed after the Pan Am Games. And that's the Midday News. I'm Herman Green. Please join us at 7 for the Primetime News Package. On behalf of the new sports and production teams, good afternoon.